Well, the banks came out uh, so far pretty strong, but Goldman Sachs already told the market to expect things are not going to be off the chart. So I'm wondering if they basically were trying right. to manage expectations to l l get our expectations down with this quarter. What do you think? And the CEOs love to play that game, right? Yeah. They love to, like, set the bar really, really low. Right, exactly. And then, aha, we beat expectations. And I think you're going to see that because what we've seen is um, we saw James Gorman talk the other day at Morgan Stanley about how the capital markets are about to pick up again. Um, if you saw J.P. Morgan, same thing. If their investment banking division actually did better than expected. So I think for Goldman, obviously, they're driven by trading and investment banking. If that stuff is bottomed, if activity is bottomed, which I think it has because we know it's going to happen with interest rates. I think we know what's going to happen with interest rates. That could be very good for the stock. It's in the Dow, and the Dow is having a magnificent run because this rally is starting to broaden out which just makes this bull market look even better. Yeah, the broadening out is really an important point because yeah. up until now, it's been a couple of technology stocks really leading things involved in artificial intelligence. Uh, but the Nasdaq's up 36% year to date. Uh, the Dow also up in double digits. Where do you want to allocate capital second half of the year with this broadening yeah. out? Well, I've been a big advocate of, look, I mean, have tech in your portfolio, but broaden out your exposure as well. If you look at the four, the magnificent seven, seven stocks make up 30% of the S&P. You're just buying a tech fund That's at this point. a big number. It's a huge number. Number. So you're not getting broad exposure. In fact, they trade like at like 40 times forward earnings. That's very similar to where they were trading before they took a big hit last year. Now you take the other 493 stocks in the S&P, we'll call them the frugal 493, they trade for a much more reasonable multiple. So you want to get that broad exposure, but get outside the S&P 500 because it's capitalization weighted by like an equal weight or spread the money out like I do for my clients. Mm. But you've got to broaden your exposure. Dollars weakening as well. So international markets are starting to pick up also. Yeah. Uh, what's going to set the tone uh, for the coming weeks? Well, I think banks have already set the tone. And I think, you know, we always talk about better than feared. Uh, that's one of Adam's favorite lines. And I think that's you're going to see here. We think earnings are supposed to be down something like 8% for the quarter. Right, 8 I think or 9%, be, yeah. Yeah, but I think it's be less than that. I can think you could actually cut that in half, and then going to the end of the year, we're going to be at single-digit positive uh, earnings growth by the last quarter this year, double-digit earning growth next year, and that's what drives markets, um, and that's why my bull case continues here, Maria. And look, I'm one of the fastest-growing wealth management firms in the country. I've got to allocate capital every day. We're putting money to work. We're not waiting. Don't sit on the sidelines. Uh, you know, I think that's going to be a bad move here.